Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mr. KB. Sorry for the glasses. My eyes look busted as hell today. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not doing the video like that. And I haven't done a video in about two weeks. Today is October 18, 2017. And, um, yeah, so I want to talk about the Niners. Of course, I haven't done the video. I'm going to try to make this really, really quick. Um, a little bit different, a little bit, uh, I guess, <laughs> cleaner and better than what I'm usually at. Um, this is an undisclosed location. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the last two weeks have been rough, has been the last weeks between two and four. Um, the Niners increase their streak of losing games to five by losing game. Sorry, they increase the streak to five total in losing games uh, by three points or less. Essentially a field goal or a safety separating uh, essentially one or two plays away. Um, it's been rough. Uh, they happened in India. They went to OT. Somehow could rally enough to get to OT, but when it came to actual OT, couldn't rally enough to get into field goal position, even though the defense had a good stop. And defense hasn't really been the problem. The only problem I see with the defense is they don't have coverage. They got good hitters. They got good tacklers. They don't have any coverage, and that is essentially a problem. I start to question all the players that they let go. Um, and in that in that role, with I think the big loss, even though it didn't really appear that way, was uh, Antoine Bethea. He was a leader, you know. what I'm saying he was a coverage guy. He was a leader. He was kind of the roll call, the way back, you know, in the back. And I think you miss his presence, uh, especially this year. And I guess talking about departures, Bowman's gone. Navarro Bowman, number fifty three. He gone. Um, they released him right before the Washington game, which they happened to lose by two points. And they could have used him that game. There was really no leadership in the middle. There was nobody there. I'm going to run just a little bit because it seems like the people they're getting rid of are all the veteran leadership that they could use right now. And I don't understand the motivation behind this. Um... From the press conference, it sounded like Navarro Bowman called out Kyle Shanahan for the way he was running the defense, which I can kind of see. And apparently John Lynch, who was a new GM, uh, and, and Kyle talked to, to Navarro and basically came about to, hey, you know, do you want to be traded to some of these teams or do you want to be a manager of your own destiny? To their credit... They let Navarro go on, on his own, and you know what? He happened to get picked up by the Oakland Raiders, I believe, yesterday. What, today's Wednesday? Yeah, I believe he got picked up on Tuesday. So, Navarro Bowman moves across the bay, joining Michael Crabtree, and I believe there's like one or two other players that used to be Niners that are over there right now, and that team is actually doing well. I hate the Raiders. I despise Raiders, but I love Navarro Bowman. That dude has been one of my favorite players players to watch every Sunday, Saturday, and sometimes Thursday, sometimes Monday. That is a dude that literally gave his knee to this franchise and to his fans for a play that at the end didn't even count. You know what I'm saying? After that, he came back strong, putting in extra work. The man was already a beast, and he put in extra work. Here, I heard a story about him saying, that he had to warm up an hour and a half before a game just to get his knee loose so he can be ready for the game. I've had an injury similar to that. Now, I didn't mean I didn't get my shit busted like that. But I remember, you know, busting a, a ligament in my knee. And I couldn't walk for like eight weeks. And, you know, I had to warm up just like he did. I had to warm up a little bit. And once you warm up, like, it's cool. Like, your body kind of goes along with it. The the, the muscles and everything there. But once you cool down and and... And relax. Those muscles seize up again. That ligament, that joint seizes up again. And for him to be playing with with that type of pain, because once you snap it, you know, like it, it's very fragile to snap it uh, again. And it's happened to me multiple times. And I don't have a tripod, so you're gonna see my arm come back and, and kind of play support. Um, but I'm gonna miss you, man. I'm gonna miss you, big dog. It, it's been a pleasure. It's been an honor to watch you play and put on that jersey, man. You have been in the Niners uniform for most of my kids' life. And those are the memories that we share. And, man, I hope you get your ring. I hate the Raiders, man, but the Raiders are going to get you that ring. Just like I was happy for Vernon Davis when he got his ring when he joined the Broncos. 
I hope you get your ring, brother. I really do, man. You get you gave a lot, and believe me, man. Not just me, but a lot of people know. You know, that didn't go unnoticed how much you gave to this franchise, and the Oakland Raiders and their fans are so are so fortunate to have picked you up. You take care of them, Oakland fans, man. That dude is family for life. I know I get tied up with it, but man, that is family right there. But yeah, man, good luck to Navarro Bowman. Um, I'm gonna miss you, brother. All right, let me move on. So going to the DC game, they lost by two points. Um, they winded up taking out Brian Hoyer uh, midway through the second and put in CJ, um, to what is it? Um, Bathia? B Bathia? No, Bathia. Bathia. <laughs> I can't remember, can't remember the dude's last name. But CJ, I'm going to call him Bathia. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. But he put in the rookie quarterback from Iowa. I saw him play a couple games in the preseason. And the one thing that I will say right now is I like the move, and not because I hate Brian Oyer, but because I hate Brian Oyer's habits. I brought it up saying that dude is a ball patter. His releases were always late because he would pat the ball, essentially telegraphing his throws before he actually threw it. You did not see that with the rookie. So I like the move. Hopefully he can develop. Hopefully he can pick up the schemes. Hopefully a full game under him will give him a better flow for the game. I like what I saw. You know, he did end the game in D.C. with a pick. But, you know, he was trying to make something happen as a young quarterback. And, you know, what? I'm going to let that pass because he did play solid. He ignited that offense. Now we can get some run behind that. I, I think he can develop into a really good quarterback. Maybe not... Um, Maybe Dak Prescott ready right away, but I think he can develop into a really good quarterback. The only thing that scares me about him is his size. He's a really small cat, so I'm scared he's going to get popped one day and it's going to end like that. Um, but yeah, I'm happy. And the other thing this movie tells me, if he continues to play the way that he plays and he develops correctly, what I'm going to be happy about is this means that they're not going to get Kirk Cousins in the offseason. There's been rumors ever since they got Kyle that they're going to bring Kirk Cousins in. I don't want Kirk Cousins here. The dude is getting paid $24 million on a franchise tag. In order to make a contract with him work, you're going to have to pay him between $20 and $23 million a season and a massive multi-year contract when you don't need a quarterback if the rookie can play this well. You're going to have a good pick, draft another rookie quarterback. Let Kyle Shanahan develop him. Kirk Cousins is not a proven winner. He's a decent quarterback. He hasn't won a thing. He hasn't proven a thing. And that's just me being observant of that particular quarterback. We don't need him in a Niners uniform taking up 30% of the cap space. We, what we need is three to four position players, leaders. And this team next season can be a top 10 team easily. This team is essentially five to six plays away from being a five and one Western Division leader surprise currently the way they are built. You put in three or four, five good pieces around them with some talent to develop. This team can be ready for the playoffs next season or at least be on the cusp of the playoffs. Uh, so this week they play Dallas. It's going to be a big game. They're going to play at Dallas, I believe. I think it's at Dallas. I'm going to say it's at Dallas. Um, but they're playing Dallas for sure. Um, you know, I hope that they win. I hope that they get their first one against us because that would actually be doubly sweet if you think about it. And other than that, man, I mean, that's all I got to say. I mean, I know I've been absent for two weeks. It's just, you know, life, family, um, things that have to come first before I do this, which is essentially my hobby and also I decided to do it in here because I figured out oh, the lighting is pretty nice and I got a new camera wanted to test out the quality of the new camera so yeah other than that all right man take it easy y'all this is Mr. KB I'll see you guys next time bye